Welcome back. Previously, we learned how to work with compounds containing double bonds in the presence of either a diatomic chlorine or bromine or with hydrogen bromide and hydrogen bromide in the presence of hydrogen peroxide. In particular, when we learned how to react a double bond or a compound containing a double bond with hydrogen bromide or hydrogen bromide with hydrogen peroxide, we learned the important concept of making Markovnikov's and anti-Markovnikov's products, right? So in the successive videos that I'm gonna present you now, we're not gonna deviate too much from that logic and learn how we can make alcohols and ketones or aldehydes from compounds containing double bond, but kind of use that existing knowledge that we learned from our Markovnikov's and anti-Markovnikov's um, products, all right? So before we get going, let me introduce to you that any compound that contains an OH group, when you mean this is, this is attached to some other large molecule, okay? Whenever we, you have a group that's contained, this by itself, okay, it's a hydroxy group, okay? This is not alcohol, but when it is part of a group, a larger group, it's considered to be an alcohol, okay? Because we do have to eventually start learning different functional groups, and this is one of the first ones that I want you to know, okay? So this is an alcohol, for instance, okay? We have learned how to write isomers using compounds containing OH groups, right? So this by itself, as I said, is a hydroxy group, okay? Whereas, when it is part of a larger compound, no matter how big the compound is, other examples could be this, okay? This is a cyclohexane containing a hydroxy groups, or it could be a benzene ring. Again, some of the things we may have not learned, but I'm just showing you different examples of alcohols. All these are alcohols, okay? And one of the common things, uh, you could find this in stores, it's the isopropyl alcohol, okay? And you could also find ethanol in stores. You may not be able to find, this is ethanol. You may be able to find a 95% ethanol in, in stores. Uh, you may not have luck finding methanol, but then this is methanol. So I'm just giving you the introduction before we get going. All right. So this, any group that contains either one or two or three hydroxy groups typically fall under the larger um, umbrella of alcohols. Okay. And then some of the common things you're familiar with are methanol, ethanol, isopropyl alcohol, et cetera, et cetera, okay? This is known as phenol, okay? This is cyclohexanol, okay? So these are some of the basic alcohols, but the point of the matter is that we will be looking at compounds containing OH groups in the successive videos, okay? There's another thing that I want to point out is aldehydes and ketones. Now, again, we don't want to venture too far into it, but I do want you to know what these compounds would look like. Okay, in chemistry in general, we write generic formulas, okay? If a compound contains a carbonyl group, which is this, just like how I said, this itself is not an aldehyde or ketone. What it is part of, what determines whether it's an aldehyde or ketone, okay? So this right by itself is known as a carbonyl group. Just like an hydroxy group, this is a carbonyl group, okay? Now, if, if it is part of a larger compound, then, then only you can determine whether that compound is an aldehyde or ketone, okay? 
R and R prime, if one of them, one or both of them, okay, is a hydrogen, okay, then it's a aldehyde, okay. If R and R prime, neither is hydrogen, means you cannot have both of them, then it is a ketone. What do I mean by that? Let me get a different screen. Okay, what do I really mean by that? All right, let's take two examples. And here's the generic formula I wrote in the previous screen. Okay, let's say if we write one of them these are basically alkyl groups or anything that is part of the of, of the chain okay let's say i pick one of the r groups to be ch3 and the other is hydrogen now we don't need to we haven't quite learned how to name aldehydes yet so it's not something you have to you know remember or memorize or try hard just remember that aldehydes at least one of the groups is a hydrogen okay so this is I'm not going to go into specific namings here this is an aldehyde but what if both groups that is sandwiching this carbonyl group let me repeat again this is a carbonyl group okay the one with the C double bond O okay that's a carbonyl group now this is a ketone in particular this is called acetone it's an excellent solvent okay it's an excellent solvent um, it's commonly one of the common areas that you may not know but it's used very frequently is uh, deodorants uh, colognes and um, nail polishes and um, things of that nature. So acetone, it's extremely flammable, okay? It's extremely flammable, okay? You can catch fire, the acetone vapor is very sensitive to sparks, flames, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is a ketone. The point of the matter is, I don't want you to start naming anything because I haven't quite taught you how to do that. So whenever your compound has this structure right here, okay, one of the end is always hydrogen, the other is what is attached to the remainder of the chain, this makes it an aldehyde, okay? And as I pointed out here, both ends are attached to a chain, but neither of them are hydrogens, then that is a ketone. Okay, just so you know, so you have a broad idea on when I discuss some of the chemical reactions, then you have a broader idea of what it is that I'm trying to do. Okay, so let's summarize everything. Okay, so the three things that we have to remember for the reminder of the three or four videos that I'll be making is anything with the OH group. Okay. If I, this means that it is attached to a chain, it corresponds to an alcohol, okay? If this is attached to say C double bond O and one of them is hydrogen, then it is an aldehyde, okay? And then if it is attached both sides to a chain, that's neither of them contributes to an hydrogen, then it leads to the formation of a ketone. Okay, just remember this because it's not something you just have to remember for the next two or three videos and just forget it. These are things that are commonly seen in a, a wide variety of organic compounds. A great deal of organic compounds either contains an alcoholic group or aldehyde groups or ketone groups. Okay, so even some of the labs we have done, if you go look at some of the products we've made, you notice that, that either it contains a double bond or it contains a aldehyde or it contains a ketone or it contains an alcohol or we've used alcohol to 
recrystallize some of our substances. Like we've used a 95% ethanol to recrystallize our product. So either way, these are things that, that you need to be very, very familiar with. So this is just basically a setup video where I'm presenting you some of the functional groups, okay? Which is either it's an alcoholic group or aldehyde group or ketone group. So in the next videos is when we actually will see the reactions happening and then we would generate products that would contain these functional groups, all right? So stay tuned for more videos.